this is about technology, about information technology from space. I will talk about mapping the Earth from satellites flying in orbits approximately 500 to 800 kilometers altitude. And while these satellites orbit the Earth, the Earth is rotating and eventually the satellite is mapping the entire Earth. In this case, this is a radar satellite. You see it can penetrate clouds and it can take uh, pictures of the Earth. Why do I tell you about this um, technology? Because uh, we have a mission. Our mission is of Earth observation in Helmholtz is to perform research and offer solutions in a wide range um, of challenges uh, from uh, global change research to sustainable development or down to very practical applications like safety and security or civil engineering and urban planning. That means from global application down to uh, regional and local applications. All of these fields have one thing in common and this is they need geo-information. And we deliver geo-information from satellites. If I talk about satellite uh, from space, then people always think about images like this. This is the highest resolution we can get currently for civil applications. It's about 30 centimeters resolution from an American um, a commercial satellite. But uh, citing uh, Magritte's famous um, surrealistic image painting, I, I want to stress that um, these are not images. Actually, these are data. And in this case, these are data from the European satellite Sentinel-2. Data means that um, what you see is only a visualization of part of the information. And each pixel here uh, is described by a geo-coordinate and by 13 highly calibrated spectral measurements of um, uh, that the, 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 the point on the ground that is representing. We have several of these satellites, different classes. So you see, uh, we have different spatial resolutions, for commercial satellites or, or um, uh, 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 scientific satellites with free and open data policy. And uh, these satellites have different types of spectral channels. So they, the high resolution satellites have only a few spectral channels. Uh, these lower resolution satellites can have uh, 13 spectral channels. They are specifically designed for, for specific applications for Earth uh, uh, system research and Hyperspectral instruments like uh, NMAP, the satellite NMAP that we will launch next year, they sample the entire spectrum uh, with more than 200 bands. So you see we have a, a large variety of technology and this is used for uh, different applications. For example, we can classify crop type, so that means we can map very accurately what happens on the Earth, on the, in the biosphere of the Earth. Um, and this uh, is, of course, not only scientifically important or commercially important, but also important for the European common agricultural policy. If you go with a spectral resolution one order of magnitude higher, then uh, we can observe the atmosphere. We can map trace gases, quantitatively map trace gases like ozone or SO2 from a, a volcanic eruption here. All of these um, data, not images, have been produced from opt in the optical uh, wavelength regime, but we are also working in radar. Particularly Germany is, has a very strong radar line. This is Terrasar X, our currently working X-band radar. X-band means wavelengths of three centimeters length. They penetrate clouds, so you don't, uh, you are not obstructed by cloud cover. You don't need the sun because it's an active instrument. And um, from these data, for example, we can map ground deformation. This is uh, the Groningen earth field, gas field in the Netherlands. And the color stands for ground subsidence. And you can see here a big subsidence bowl where the gas, earth gas, has been extracted. You see a very strong one here. So this is where houses crack. They really get cracks. If you go there, you can see this at every house. Infrastructure is endangered. And the Accuracy with which we can do this is approximately one millimeter per year from 700 kilometers away. That means it's equivalent as if um, I moved an object in Munich by one millimeter per year and you can observe it from, from Berlin here. So this is the, one of the highest accuracies, geodetic accuracies you can get from space. We can also map seasonal motion, you see here. Um, this blue area here uh, uh, shows that we have an underground gas storage that it is filled in summer and emptied in winter. 
if we combine two of these uh, satellites, then we form a radar interferometer that allows us to map the height of the Earth's surface. And by comparing different heights, um, we can uh, observe the, the, the loss, volume loss, mass loss of glaciers. These is the Patagonian ice fields, the southern and the northern ones, and the color stands for height loss. This is uh, up more than 100 meters over these 12 years in some cases, and from that we can also estimate the influence to sea li uh, level rise. And not these numbers are important, these are important, there are error bars with it. So three, uh, two thirds of the work here, of the scientific work, is assessing these error bars, because um, such an, uh, um, uh, a sensitive measurement without an error bar is worth nothing. Okay, this was a very short um, um, uh, summary of a few of the technologies we have today in Earth observation, but why are we in the golden age of Earth observation? I use this, uh, this picture by Lukas Granach, the elder, for symbolizing the golden age. This is not the lunch break uh, for our PhD students. The, the working conditions at DLR are very good, but they are not so good. So why are we in the, in the golden age? There are two reasons, actually. Uh, the first one is that we have an extremely strong European Earth Observation Program with an observation capability that has been, never been there to the, uh, uh, before. So we have three lines and the, the workhorse line for operational Earth Observation is the Copernicus Program with these satellites. They have the name Sentinels, like the Watchmen in Space, Watchmen in Space. Uh, and they uh, deliver uh, data on a reliable uh, basis, free and open. And with this program, Europe is the world largest provider of open Earth observation data. The second reason why we are in, in a golden age is that we have our own mission proposals for future uh, Earth observation missions. And the most exciting one is Tandemel. It's again a radar mission, but now in a different wavelength regime. Um, L-band, which means uh, 25 centimeters, this has certain advantages. And these are two satellites, again, flying in a very close formation. But we will use here a new technology called digital beamforming that allows us to map the Earth twice every eight days. And this mission has been tailored um, uh, to map dynamic processes on, on the Earth's surface in the four spheres, biosphere, geosphere, cryosphere, and hydrosphere, uh, for, for, a diff, um, for different observation intervals from days to years. Uh, during the last years, we have um, developed 25 information products, highly relevant ones, together with other Helmholtz centers, with seven Helmholtz centers. Among them, there are seven essential climate variables. So this is a very versatile mission uh, and provides um, continuously these, these variables. Well, with, with all these observation capability, Earth observation has been catapulted in the big data era. Earth observation has become big data, and this chart shows only our, the German data archive, Earth observation data archive, and you see how these Sentinel satellites have changed the picture dramatically. So there were really game changers in Earth observation. I'm now 30 years in this topic and I have never experienced a, dis uh, um, a disruptive development like this, which started in 2015, approximately. So we are talking about hundreds of, of pe petabytes in the future. And these are no volatile data. Uh, they are uh, cultural heritage. That means they have to be kept forever for research. But I mean, everybody has heard a thousand times this uh, data is the oil of the 21st century, but uh, the oil only makes sense if uh, we have machines to convert them into something useful, and these machines are algorithms. So we need algorithms for big Earth observation data analytics, and these algorithms today are mostly based on machine learning uh, or on uh, artificial intelligence, we call this AI for EO, artificial intelligence for Earth observation. And today the most modern methods are uh, deep neural networks. So this is a small fraction of our zoo of uh, specially designed deep neural networks for Earth observation. Uh, this is necessary because we cannot simply use um, neural networks that have been designed to find um, cats, dogs and babies in internet images. These are totally different tasks. And I show you only one example out of this. This has to do with urban mapping. Why urban mapping? 
because uh, urbanization is the mega trend of global change after climate change and influences climate change and is influenced by climate change. This is the reason why urban areas has become and has deserved an own chapter in the IPCC report, the first time in the fifth IPCC assessment report in 2014 and ever since. In order to assess the development of urban areas where there are slums, for example, uh, how, the, how the population on the earth is distributed, you need data. And the best if you have open data. Um, one of the most uh, successful open data source for, uh, for urban areas is OpenStreetMap. However, although it is uh, very successful, from the three billion buildings we have approximately uh, on, on the Earth, there are only 12% of those are represented in two dimensions. That means uh, the footprint of, this, of these buildings and only less than half a percent is represented in 3D. And we will change this, we will move these numbers close to 100% in the next two years. We do this by Earth observation and by machine learning. We first produce uh, building footprints from a source uh, of um, uh, new space satellites. These are satellites where we have approximately uh, 150 in space, extremely cheap satellites from the company Planet. They are globally available and more or less affordable. But the quality of those small satellite data is not very good, so we need the, the most modern methods to, uh, to derive this, um, this building footprint. So we train a specially designed uh, convolutional neural network for those, and then we can uh, extract from these type of data building footprints. And if you combine now this data with uh, another technology, SAR tomography, then we can derive building heights and um, can get such level of detail one um, uh, city models and the, we will do this for the whole world and this data will be openly available in two years. Okay, what are the messages to take home? I have four of them. The first, yes, we are in the golden age of Earth observation. We have new exciting mission proposals like uh, Tandem L. Earth observation is a big data topic par excellence and we need a new Earth observation specific artificial intelligence to be developed. There are a lot of things to do, although uh, there are, uh, this, this topic is already quite successful. Thank you very much for your attention.